What's up guys, Johnny Sedum here from Johnny Jigs TV and today we're going to talk about assist hooks. It can be confusing. I want to dig into assist hook placement, common mistakes that people make whenever putting assist hooks on their jigs, as well as some different brands, common materials that the hooks are made out of, as well as some of my top favorites. Guys, as we dig into this video, if you have any questions concerning assist hooks, put them in the comment section below. So a good hook for slow pitch jigging, it's typically strong, it's typically sharp, they're durable and they're able to withstand the pressure of a deep water fish and not bend out or break. That's what you're looking for when you're picking out a slow pitch jigging hook. So when it comes to sizes, generally you're picking the assist hook size based on the jig that you're using. So for smaller size jigs, you're generally gonna use smaller size lures with a smaller size assist cord on them. And with the bigger lures, you're gonna use something that's a little bit longer as well as a hook that is larger in size. Common materials that are used in making assist hooks are generally high carbon steel, which is very strong. There's a certain way that they heat treat it. I can't tell you the exact processes. I'm sure we could go into a whole nother video in depth on how they make these hooks. But I can tell you that they also will coat them with rust resistance and that way your hooks last longer. Granted it is terminal tackle, they're not cheap and you wanna keep them for as long as you possibly can. So one thing to look at on assist hooks is some of them will have an eye, like this one in my hand here, and then other ones can have a spade in, like so. On an eye hook, you're actually tying to the hook and a lot of guys will use a uni knot. I use a triple wrap uni knot. It works well, it secures it to the hook. And then on the spade ones, there's a bobbing tool that is used to actually wind a thin thread around the hook and to attach it to the assist cord. Both are great, but the difference, what I can tell you is, this one's more streamlined with the spade in because you don't have that round piece that is catching water while it's descending or ascending. Question is, is the difference negligible it can be but to better your chances of catching a fish I like more streamlined that's what works for me I have a tungsten jig here that was given to me by Noah from Daiwa and uh, it's a little guy he's only 30 grams but because we're sitting in this shallow water as long as I can feel bottom I've got a chance so let's throw this down and see what happens so hook placement guys is important you can strategically place these hooks on a lure in a fashion that will 100% definitely increase your chances of a hookup. And that's something I'm gonna dig into depth a little more right now. In my hand here, this is a 90 gram flatback Johnny Jig. And you can see that this lure has a, a pretty short profile. I wanna say it's probably about five inches. And if you could see, this is actually a Van Fook um, BBS hook. You could see that this hook is just incredibly large in comparison to this jig. So kind of common sense that this size hook is not going to be ideal for slow pitch jigging. For other applications, maybe speed jigging, this might work, but for slow pitch, this is not going to be an ideal setup because you only have one hook and really the hook is almost as big as the jig. It's going to affect the action of the jig. So what you want to do with this is probably put twin assists on the top and the bottom and you want to make sure one thing, that your hooks cannot connect like this. So you want to have a gap in between your hooks at least this big because if the hooks can connect like that, chances are that you're going to foul up underwater and you're going to be fishing the lure with the hooks attached like this and you're not going to have a chance of hooking into a fish. You'd have to get very lucky. So that's the first thing. The next thing is you want to look at the wire size on the hooks. This is actually micro jig with tensile from Van Fook. These are incredible hooks and the wire size on these is I would say on the smaller size but not 
not on the micro size, so it's a little bit heavier. If you know that you're in an area that you're gonna get into some big fish, these are probably good hooks for you to use due to the fact that the wire size is a little bit thicker. Also, this has wire cis cord. That's gonna help you from the toothy critters, whether you get into a wahoo or a kingfish or anything with teeth that can slice through your wire. These are pretty great. Another option that you have is to put devils on top and the bottom. Now, this depends on where you live. If you are in California, you're not gonna be able to put four sets of hooks onto your lure. So, I do have an option for you you guys this is the singles I would put a single on the top and the bottom and the micro jig tensile is perfect for the Johnny jigs flatback 90 gram these hooks won't touch if you wish you could actually just put two on the top or two on the bottom personally and from my experience on the water I like to have one on the top and the bottom just a few other great options for you to think about whenever you're picking out hooks for micro jigs the jigging from Van Fook you have a size one two and three which are all great for the micro jigs obviously the smaller the jig if you get into a 20 gram jig the one's probably gonna be the best if you get into a 40 gram jig maybe bump it up to the two or the three all of them will work for micro jigs but you can size them out and play with it as you wish just a couple last quick hooks that I'd like to show you guys is the VMC tech set this is a tandem hook some of them come in a four pack and then you get a three pack and a three pack the three of these in this size which is a one a 10 and a 20 will work great for micro jigging it's definitely something that I would use out on the water and then the last thing that I really like if you're gonna put just hooks on top I like these ocean legacy stingers because they're offset and it gives you a little bit more of a chance of catching the fish also these are very micro so if you're looking for tiny tiny hooks ocean legacy stingers are the way to go all right guys let's talk about some mid water depth assist hooks for jigs ranging from 100 grams up to about 300 grams in my hand you can see that i have the long flatty as well as our flat back which is 300 grams and a 250 ufo torpedo glider picking hooks for these a lot of times on the long jigs you're not going to be able to touch the hooks in the middle so your selection is vast you can pick through many many hooks until you get to one that you really really like and that is working effectively for you on the water but i'm going to show you a few of my favorites when i'm out on the water one is the tandem assist from vmc these are a little bit longer of an assist cord, so I like to match these up with a longer jig. And I have two on top and I have two on the bottom. That way it increases my hookup chances by that many hooks. And then the same could go for the flat back, but these hooks could possibly be too long to where the hooks are hooking into each other. So I'll switch it up a little bit and play around with it until I get ones that work. Another option that I really like for the midwater depths is the Johnny Jigs 60 single assist. These do have tassels on them. I will cut those off just to make it a little more streamlined, but I really like using these because I have found from my experience being on the water that a lot of times with the double hooks, the hooks end up in the same exact spot on the fish. Now granted, that's gonna give you a lot of chances of the hook not pulling out or straightening out but because they're in the same spot it's ripping a bigger hole and not only that you're not getting a complete hook set so when i see people who have a hook bent out straight a lot of you are thinking first that oh this is a faulty hook it bent out these hooks are no good but that's not always the case what actually can happen is the hook does not fully set. So if you're fighting a fish from the loop part of the hook right here, it's gonna be the strongest part of the hook because you got a full set on the fish. But if it doesn't make it past the barb and you're only in on the tip edge of the hook, now it has a leverage point to be able to straighten the hook out. So you're fighting the fish essentially like this. And that's why the hook's straightened out. So that's why a lot of the mindset of slow pitch guys is to use a thinner wire hook and be able to get past that barb and get a full hook set so you have the strength. But as we get into bigger fish, we do know that we need to use a heavier wire. So it's important that you have a good hook set. If you guys have seen any of my other videos and see me on the water, I'm gonna show you one here. When I set the hook, I can tell you one thing, I mean it. And it's important in order to land the fish. Coming up now, like he's I like- I got the Zig 300 on. He's like yeah, I'm on coast too. This fish got bigger. Oh, there he goes. 
<laughs> I got color on my end. Here we go. Let's see what we got. We got color. And Guff, man. survey says. Oh, it looks good. I see some brown. It might be a big. What do we got? It's a grouper. Dude, I got a gag! Dude, a gag in the middle. Yeah! Water. All right. Look at that. Look at that. We got a gag! So just a few great options for the Midwater Twin Assist hook set is the VMC Tandem Assist that I showed you. It's a light, slow pitch jigging. This is the 5.0. I'd recommend it for lures from 100 grams up to approximately 300 grams, depending on the length of the lure. The other one, and one of, one of the crowd favorites, is the Van Fook jigging. These are excellent hooks. They have a long assist cord on them, a little bit thinner wire. These are excellent hooks. And then one more, the Mustad Jigging Assist. If you're a guy who likes a little bit of glow, it's got a little bit of glow right here in these knots at the top of the lure. And these are fantastic hooks as well. So next up guys, I wanna talk about deep water long jigs. This is our 400 gram torpedo red and gold. This is a long jig, right? So this thing's almost a foot. When you're dropping down to 800, 900, 1,000 feet and beyond, the last thing you wanna do is foul up. In other words, you don't want your hook to come over the top of the jig and actually hook the leader. So now your jig is staying permanently sideways. Your hook is essentially out of commission and your chances of catching a fish are pretty slim to none. When we drop down deep, our crew, for the most part, we like to use single assist hooks. So some of my favorites on the water, as far as the singles go, once again, the Johnny Jig 6.0 is an excellent hook. I have caught monster fish on this many, many times and it has proven itself it is worthy it is an excellent excellent hook next up once again the van fook bbs if you go with a 3-0 it's a perfect size for deep drop and putting a single on the top and the bottom it's got a little bit lengthy to the cord and a beefier assist cord as well next one the gamagatsu 620 hd these are pretty incredible hooks they're not cheap but they're very sharp. They got a great hookup ratio. And then the 620 is another one that is excellent. I like these because they're spliced right into the solid ring. It's a spade in, it's streamlined. It's exactly what you're looking for in deep water jigging. And one more reason that we're using the single hooks and larger hooks as we're dropping down deeper is to avoid small fish. You don't want to catch a fish this big whenever you're dropping down to those depths. Reeling up can be tiresome, of course, unless you're using electrics. So you want to make the best of every opportunity and make sure that you capitalize. Do what you're gonna do, do what you're gonna do. Are we having fun yet? Last thing I want to talk to you guys about is jigging for big game fish. And I'm talking about triple digit tunas. What's the hook? And here are some options. So when the team and I went to California, we loaded up on assist hooks. We had quite a few different options with us. A lot of them were great. Some of them definitely shine better than the rest. And those are the ones that I'm gonna to show to you. So the Van Fook BBS. So this is a 6.0. It's a beefy hook. You're gonna have to set very hard to make sure that this penetrates into the fish well, but this one will stand up to the fight of a triple digit fish, no doubt. The next one is the 4-0. Skip down a couple sizes. This one's gonna work absolutely well for you on the big tunas. Also, I like to tie my own hooks. So you'll see that I actually spliced a Dyneema cord into the solid ring there. This is the Johnny Jigs 5-0 assist hook. These things were excellent when we were out there in California. And here's one of my Van Fuchs that I actually used. This hook right here landed a triple digit fish. I promise you that. So there's brands that have been around forever like Mustad, Van Fook, VMC. And then there's guys who are very specific like us at Johnny Jigs. We only build slow pitch gear at this moment. So for advanced techniques for assist hooks and rigging them onto lures, 
guys are gonna play around with stuff. They're gonna see which one works best for them. I like to mess around with chord lengths. I like to mess around with sizes. And I like to really fine tune what I'm doing and get it perfect. There's no wrong answer. If you're catching fish and you're having a good time, that's the answer. But what I could suggest is just follow a few of the simple rules that I showed you guys in this video. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're putting a few TikTok videos out there. And most importantly, jig on. <laughs>